It looks like the Bodybuilding.com hot potato game will continue. So instead of getting to my thoughts around an introductory statement a bit later in this content, let's just kind of jump right into this. What I've dubbed the Bodybuilding.com hot potato game is basically the best analogy that I could create that describes what has happened to the specialty supplement e-commerce website over the last like four-ish years. Bodybuilding.com has been involved in three confirmed mergers and acquisitions transactions since July of 2019, with a fourth possibly happening soon. The first was a related party transaction that happened between Liberty Expedia Holdings and Expedia Group. About a year later, Expedia Group was facing huge market pressures from you know what in 2020 and had to shed all of its non-core travel assets. So the private equity firm, the Najafi Companies, took advantage of this fire sale and attempted to stabilize the struggling bodybuilding.com but decided to cut its losses early and sell two years later to Retail E-Commerce Ventures, which is owned by Ty Lopez and his partner, Alex Muir. Now, Retail E-Commerce Ventures is reportedly in financial trouble and have hired advisors to consider a variety of strategic options that include lining up a potential buyer for its portfolio companies, putting up intellectual property as collateral for a possible loan or investment, or filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. While I went into a lot more detail around the business strategies and early deal history of retail e-commerce ventures in an August 2020 content titled, What Has Ty Lopez Been Up To Lately? Here's kind of a quick recap. Retail e-commerce ventures was founded in 2019 with the goal of transforming well-known, undervalued retail brands into e-commerce success stories. The Ty Lopez co-founded private equity firm is focused squarely on paying discount prices for the intellectual property of high volume businesses that still have some semblance of brand affinity. Retail e-commerce ventures spent a reportedly $120 million to amass a portfolio of aging retail names that include obviously the before mentioned Bodywood.com, but also Pier One Imports, Radio Shack, Tuesday Morning, Steinmart, Models, Sporting Goods, and Linen and Things, among a number of other kind of lesser known retail brands. Most of these have been a straightforward e-commerce transformation, while others, such as Radio Shack, took on a larger rebrand process. In that content two and a half years ago, I essentially praised the vision of retail e-commerce ventures to kind of take advantage of an arbitrage opportunity created by the Great Shutdown, but caution trusting the long-term execution of this forward-leaning digital-only strategy. I still believe fundamentally the concept of retail e-commerce ventures was sound, but execution is everything. Though retail e-commerce ventures books are private, various sources privy to that financial information stated that the 2021 revenues totaled $150 million, but they did have net losses on that of $90 million. And then in 2022, revenue supposedly fell off like a rock to $60 million, which seems unbelievably low. And the company had net losses that were also right around $60 million. Retail e-commerce ventures has supposedly racked up about $200 million in debt. Much of that raised from accredited investors who likely were among the millions of Ty Lopez social media followers or got interested after hearing one of the co-founders actively promoting their venture across digital and analog television mediums. For those unfamiliar with the term accredited investor, those are defined by the SEC as individuals with a net worth over $1 million, excluding their primary residence and having income over $200,000. Now, I never reached out or was a part of that investor funnel, but sources stated that copy in those promotional emails in the last year were increasingly suggestive of almost guaranteeing returns, which is a big no-no in the eyes of regulatory agencies. Now, I'm not an expert in this area, and I'm sure they had the proper like financial disclaimers that warn investors of a possibility of like total loss from participating in off-market deals, but 
An impending bankruptcy likely makes the story a bit sadder due to the larger number of individual investors involved in retail e-commerce ventures. In my personal opinion, while a Hail Mary deal of all or parts of retail e-commerce ventures could happen, Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection looks to be the highest probability. The kind of first red flag came last month when Discount Retailer Tuesday Morning filed for Chapter 11 again, just months after retail e-commerce ventures paid $35 million for a controlling stake in the retailer. While Tuesday Morning might have very well been unrepairable, it's the perception of bad deal-making that will likely sting the worst long-term for retail e-commerce ventures as existing investors lose confidence and new investors stay away, leaving the company with less options. The second red flag came when a vendor recently reported that retail e-commerce ventures stated it will pause payments on its debts. Okay, enough for the retail e-commerce ventures financial trouble stuff. What does this all mean for Bodybin.com? Well, this is all kind of speculation at this point, but it likely changes hands for a fourth time in four years. I'll say that after clicking around some of the other websites owned by retail e-commerce ventures, Bodyman.com looks not too shabby comparably. Now, don't twist my words into thinking I'm saying Bodyman.com is in good shape because it's not. For one, it's monthly website traffic has dropped over 30% in the last two years. But maybe it was a combination of Ty Lopez being passionate about the category and it already operating as a pure play e-commerce business with the needed content assets that it has been able to sustain some semblance of relevancy in the market. I know this is like trying to catch a falling knife, but Bodyman.com is still a well-known, undervalued retail brand that pioneered the e-commerce strategy of combining commerce, community, and content. At the last time numbers were reported, the BodyFit digital fitness coaching app was profitable. It had a content library that boasts more than 25,000 articles and 9,000 videos, a social media following that's in the tens of millions combined across its digital platforms, an e-commerce store that does have private label and third-party brands, and then also a neglected body space social media experience in an old-school form online community with reportedly 15 million registered members. When it was announced that Ty Lopez was purchasing Bodybuilding.com, he stated, at a time when there's so much noise and confusion on the internet, the company's trusted content, products, and community are more valuable than ever. I still think that's true, but as I stated in that content last year, I'm unsure if Ty Lopez truly understands what's repairable and unrepairable at Bodybuilding.com. I've consistently said in numerous content pieces over the years that there's still value in bodybin.com, but is it worth repairing? What the website doesn't need is another let's do as we've always done, but maybe just a little bit cheaper and expect better results type of an owner. What bodybin.com needs now is a transformative thinker that has sufficient capital and the patience to turn this ship around. Maybe I need to message Ryan DeLuca and see if he wants to pull a Steve Jobs-like return to the company he founded 24 years ago from his garage at the age of 20. But since this is a kind of developing story, I'm going to end right here and wait until we have more information. When things get less opaque, I'll be here to share all the implications that it could have on the supplement industry stakeholders. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 70% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.